Welcome to Dulce America. Everybody. Welcome indeed to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch and thank you very much for joining me. Today we're going to be looking at the dominant seventh chord. Now you might have looked up on the page if you're not familiar with this chord and saw that little seven sitting next to a note and thought, not sure exactly what to do with that, so I'll just play the chord without the seven. And that works perfectly fine. What the seventh chord does, it adds one note to our typical three note chord and it creates a very jolly piece of lovely music uh, traction that we can use. And I'll talk about that and show you lots of tips and tricks to bring it into your everyday music. But first, I wanna give a big shout out to one of my patrons on Patreon, that's Dave Barry. Dave, brother, thank you so much for your pledges, for your friendship, for the bags, for the bow stuff, for everything that you and Diane do. It's just a wonderful thing. It's been wonderful to know you. Remember that time you guys just showed up out of the blue at a gig I was doing in New Mexico because you happened to be in the same neck of the woods? That's some cool stuff right there. So I want to thank you for all that you do, brother, and I always look forward to seeing you and Diane whenever we're out and about. So if you guys are wondering out there, other folks, what this whole Patreon thing is about, it's a subscription service for artists of all types. There's lots of artists, and I happen to be one of the lucky ones that's in there enjoying sharing my music, my video, tablet shirt, special exclusive content for the channel, and a lot more. If you like any of my videos or music, I think you'd like it. And for just $5 a month, you can get the whole thing. Everything I've ever done and everything I'm doing now and everything I ever will do, it's very, very, very fun stuff and a very cool time to be here. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash bingfutch and go to the uh, featured tag section. There's one there called Open House. Those are all the posts that have been tagged for the public. So you can come and download to your heart's content. And hopefully you'll want to join our happy crew over there, a wonderful community based on love, appreciation, and friendship. Again, Dave Barry, thank you very much. So today we are talking about the dominant seventh chord. Before we jump into that, it's a four note chord, let's look and review quickly at the two chords that we're playing a lot, the major and the minor chord. These are both three note chords and we are typically a three stringed instrument, so we can play these chords wholeheartedly and with uh, full righteous abandon. So what we're going to do here is uh, build some chords starting with D. We got D major, so we're going to play D, F sharp, and A. But they all involve D, F sharp, and A in whatever grouping that we can arrange. There's D, there's A, there's F sharp, there's F sharp, there's D, there's A, there's A, there's F sharp, there's D. So those three notes combined together. Typically, that's going to be the one, the three, and the five, the first, third, and fifth notes of the major scale. So you could start that scale, for example, with D, D, E, F sharp, G, A, one, three, and five. Do the same thing with G, G, A, B, C, D. So one, three, and five would be G, B, and D, and there are the ingredients for a G major chord. A major, A, B, C sharp, D, E. We want the one, three, five, A, C sharp, E, and those are the notes for an A major chord. Those are the three chords we play the most, and they're nice, happy, uplifting chords. In fact, they're the most popular chords in the world. Why? It's a lot of science. We can get into it another time, but those chords are the happiest chords you're going to find. They're just major chords. Now, we're going to change that formula a bit. The one, the three, and the five. The one will stay the same for a minor chord. The five will stay the same for a minor chord. But the three, we're going to take that down a half step. And when we take a note down a half step, we flatten it or it's a minor version of what that note was before. So if it was a three before, now we're gonna make it a minor three. So in the case of, let's say, A major, A, C sharp is the three, and then E. If we take that C sharp down a half step, we end up with C natural and a, a minor chord, A, C, and E. 
So if you take a look here, we have A, C sharp, and E. And if I take this C sharp down a half step to C natural, ah, uh, there we have the somber minor chord. We can do the same thing with D major. Here's F sharp, that's the third. Take that down a half step, you'll get F natural. And there's our D minor. On the Mountain Dulcimer fretboard tuned in DAD, we cannot play a G minor chord because that middle note, B, comes down a half step and becomes B flat. And we do not have that on the normal fretboard. If you've got a half fret right here, then yes, you could probably play, you can play a G minor chord. You would do it like three, half fret three. They are building a freeway outside my house and they're being very loud about it right now. So yes, you could do it there, but we can't do it. I can't do it because I don't have that fret. Um, <laughs> on the side note, however, if you wanted to go the whole hog and make this happen and have the half that you need for a G minor, you could play a bar at the third fret, which would give you your one and your five, G and D, and then you can get yourself a double dulcimer, and on the other fretboard, tune it to C, and then play the bass note at the sixth fret, which is B flat. That would give you a G minor chord across two. I've done that in concert, it's kind of fun. Okay, so a major chord is one, three, five, up, happy sounding stuff. Minor chords, take that one and five, and in the three in the middle, take that three down a half step, and you have one flat three five, or one minor three five, and that's gonna be your minor chords. Not as happy and shiny, kind of sad and somber. It's all minor chords. So let's go back to our major chord setup, one, three, and five. Now, for the uh, dominant seventh chord, we're going to add one more note to the equation, and that is going to be the flat seventh of the associated scale. So if we're thinking about D major and we're making a D7 chord, we'll first start off with those three notes of the major scale, so the one, the one, the three, and the five. We'll play D, F sharp, and A. And you can do that just by playing zero, zero, two. And then we want to add our fourth note. Now that is going to be the flat seventh of the associated scale. The associated scale in this case is D. So we're going to look for the seventh note of that scale, which is going to be C sharp. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's the seventh note, six and a half fret, that is C sharp. We're going to take it down a half step to the sixth fret where we have C natural. So D, F sharp, A, and C would make a D7 chord. So how are we supposed to play four notes when we have three string courses? The non-obvious answer is we're gonna drop one of the other notes out of the picture. And here's a real quick tip for doing this. When you drop these notes out, try to keep, when you've got a four note chord, try to keep the third and the seventh in the picture. You can lose the root and you can lose the fifth but always keep the third and seventh because it's that relationship that will give these extended chords uh, their very particular quality. It's that relationship that makes them sound the way that they do. So we can lose the root on this. For example, let's take a look at an A7 chord. That would be A, C sharp, E, and then we're looking for the flat seventh of the associated scale, which is gonna be A. So if we start with A, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, Six and a half fret once again, take that down a half step to the sixth fret, and we've got G. <clears throat> a, C sharp, E, and G is going to give you an A7 chord. We can play the stretch chord. I know y'all hate this chord. I hate it too. One, two, four. There's our stretch extended slant A major chord. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the thumb, which is playing an A. We've got C sharp on the middle string, E on the bass string. We're actually going to take the A and move it down to the third fret where we have a G. That's going to be our flat seventh. So all we're going to be playing here is the third, the fifth, and the flat seventh. We're not playing the root of the chord at all. And here's what we end up with. 
as an A7 chord. It still works. Why? Well, the placement of all of those notes simply suggests the presence of the A, which doesn't need to be there, because we've got the relationship between the 3, the 5, and the flat 7. And it's like the mind fills in a blank there, especially if you recently just played an A major chord and then changed to an A7 chord. A little bit of musical voodoo going on there. Okay, so that is how you assemble a seventh chord, a dominant seventh chord. Now, when you see the seven written down next to the letter, that means automatically a dominant seventh chord. We can go deeper into the modes and the intervals at a certain time. Uh, now is not that time, but I do want to explain that there is going to be a major seven chord as well. So a D major seven chord would be written D, M, A, J, and then the seven. So there are two different types of the seventh chords that you need to be really aware of right off the bat, because we can play both of them. The seventh chord has more, the dominant seventh chord, has more of a quizzical sound to it, you know? The uh, major seventh chord sounds more lush and more, uh, I don't know. If, <laughs> if the dominant seventh chord is, is um, Eddie Albert from Green Acres, you know, then the major seventh chord is Zsa Zsa Gabor. She's kind of cosmopolitan and, you know, glitzy, and New York's the place I'd rather stay. I just referenced a line from Green Acres theme song. That's very strange. So um, there's the major seventh. It's going to have M-A-J-7. But when you see a seven and the note by itself, then all you've got is a dominant seventh. And typically, people just, just call them seventh chords. Um, so the ones that we are going to be running into the most are going to be A7 and D7. So we looked at that as D, F sharp, A, and then a C natural. Really, you could strum open and then hit your bass string at the sixth fret. And that would come pretty close to giving you, the voicing isn't the best in the world, meaning the notes are not as close together as I'd like them to be. Um, but you have D, A, and C there. So that gives you enough to play D7. However, if you have a one and a half fret, you can play it like this and bring your C in on the middle string. So you have F sharp on the melody, C on the middle, and D on the bass. So we want to keep that three in there, F sharp. We want to keep that seven, obviously, because that's part of the reason we're trying to put all this stuff together. And then we do have the root that's settled in there. So the fifth is missing in this case, and it still works out really well. With the one and a half, you can also play a G7 chord. That is just by sliding these fingers down here. Numbers on that would be zero, one, one and a half for the G7. And for the D7 would be zero, one and a half, two. A7 is one, two, three. Three quick sevens there. So if you don't have a one and a half fret, you can still play the D7, you can still play A7. But if you don't have the one and a half fret, you can't go any further than that. If you want to get the one and a half fret, a lot of things open up for you if you go there, lots of colors. It's not as scary as you might think it would be, not as confusing. It is totally worth it to get a little extra color in this region of the fretboard. So um, what do we do with these seventh chords now that we've got them? I mean, how do you use a seventh chord? Do you use it like a normal primary chord? Sometimes you do. In blues music, sometimes Oftentimes, the seventh chord uh, is the primary chord. So we'd go through and do something like this. It has that musical tension that the blues requires. And so the seventh chord is perfect for doing that. Other times, you can move those chords around. Your basic one, four, five chords built off the first, fourth, and fifth notes of the scale. You move those chords around and then throw the seventh in before you change to the next chord. And that gives it a little extra flavor as well. So if I move from D 
to G, back to D, and to A, D, G, D, A, D. Now I'm going to go through and add a few seventh chords in. So I'll go D, and then bring in the seventh, and then go to G. Listen to that resolution there. If we have musical conflict from the seventh chord, it's an unsettled chord. It's restless. It wants to do something. It wants to go somewhere. Oh, sweet resolution. That's one of the beauties of that seventh chord. It helps you to do this little gimmicky thing where you introduce some tension and then let it go. And then introduce some tension and let it go. It's kind of like a screenplay for a TV show or a film. If a film had no conflict and it was just straight through, no ups, no downs, no peaks, no valleys, everything was just peachy, it'd be kind of boring, wouldn't it? You want conflict, you want drama, you want escalation, you want de-escalation. You want, oh my gosh, you want, oh, that was close. That makes an awesome, awesome film. It makes an awesome ride as well. And you know what? It makes a great tune at the same time. So instead of just moving our D, G, and A chords around, we add a little conflict in there. Get some nice resolution. Nice resolution from A7 to D. Now you'll notice I didn't use the D7 and the G7 and all that stuff every single time I went through those chords because the seventh chord is sort of like a spice. You don't want to make it a primary ingredient because your primary chords, that's what they're there for. The seventh chords are like a spice, or as I like to say, it's like a kiss on the cheek of the chord before you send it on its way and bring a new chord into play. So I don't use them all the time. Use them just enough to create enough of that tension and then come back to them later on. Now I want to show you another secret, because if you do not have a one and a half fret, you can still play a lot more seventh chords than the A and this D up here. The trick is you want to bar the chord. I'm barring four at the moment, which would be an A5 chord, a root five chord, since we're only playing the root of the chord, A, and the fifth of the chord, E, on the middle string, there is no third whatsoever. So whenever you play open or bar, those are all root five chords. They're not full major chords. They're not full minor chords because the third, the difference between the major and the minor chord is missing. And for that reason, bar chords can serve as either the major or the minor. And if you just go by the bass string, whatever you're fretting on the bass string, it's going to make it the root of that chord. So this would be A. That could be A minor, or it can be A major if you're playing back up for somebody. Now, take your melody string, go down one fret, and in most of the fretboard, this is going to give to you a dominant seventh chord. So this would be considered an A7 chord. If you play a 1 1 0, you'll get an E7 chord. and so forth and so on, all up and down the fretboard. Now, certain areas, because we have an unusual diatonic fretboard with whole steps and half steps, some of these areas, when you go to go down one fret, you'll end up with a major seventh chord instead. In fact, that's what happens here at the third fret with G major. If I go down one fret, I will get the major seventh interval, not the flat seventh, the minor seventh interval for the uh, dominant seventh. So I'll end up with a pretty chord like this. It's Zsa Zsa. It's a pretty chord. But if you have a one and a half fret, you can go down a whole step from three, and that'll give you a G7 chord there, or you can play it here. 
So again, the dominant seventh chord is a neat, neat way to bring in a little extra color, a little drama, if you will. Not unpleasant drama, but still something going on that just shakes things up a little bit. And as I'm want to doing an awful lot, here's another good example with Amazing Grace. So the extra little bits of the seventh notes just add a nice pretty little thing in there. So it's not even like dramatic in a way that you would normally expect drama. It's just a flourish and it's a bit of musical tension that sounds so nice when it resolves and it adds beauty to any song. And that, my friends, is the dominant seventh chord in a nutshell. There's a lot more stuff we can look at, and there are other types of chords that are available out there that is a, they're a little brain spinning, but they're fun. You know, there's minor seventh chords, there's the major seventh chord we talked about, and uh, there's a lot more as well. So down the road, we'll keep digging. But thank you very much for joining me, and hopefully you'll drop those little chords in there every now and again into the tunes you're playing right now, and you'll have fun. You'll go, wow, this is great. I want to do more of this. And before you know it, you're playing a chromatic dulcimer. I'm not against diatonic dulcimers at all, but colors are so much fun. Thanks again for joining me, everybody. By the way, I want to remind you I'm looking for people to open up Dulce America each and every episode by saying, welcome to Dulce America. So if you'd like to send me a video, I prefer landscape, not portrait, but if you've got portrait, that's okay, but this is really, really good. Send me a video, about seven or eight seconds of you saying, welcome to Dulce America with your dulcimer and send it to bingfutch at yahoo.com. We'd love to put you on the front end of the show so you can welcome everybody to come on in, sit down and have a good time. Thanks again, everybody. I've got more episodes just around the corner, and I will see you next time around. Until then, my name is Bing Futch. Play on, baby. Play on. that. <laughs>